purpose of this lesson is to discuss the current status of HTML5, to discuss key differences between HTML4, XHTML, and HTML5, to discuss key principles of HTML5, and to introduce the HTML5 element family. Throughout these lessons, we've been talking about HTML5, and I've shown you different things that HTML5 can do. One of the questions that people will frequently have is, is HTML5 a standard? And the answer is yes. As of October 2014, the final revision was made and HTML5 became a standard. Before that, we still used some of the syntax elements of HTML5, but it was not officially a standard. It was not officially recognized by all of the browsers, but as of today, all of the current browsers do understand and are mostly compliant with HTML5. Some of the key differences between HTML4, XHTML, and HTML5 are going to be the doc type declarations. In HTML4, we make a doc type declaration like this where we actually have to uh, specify what the DTD is. That's that document type declaration that we were talking about before. And we actually had to specify where it was located. So the um, World Wide Web Consortium provided the actual DTD for us and we had to list where it was located. In XHTML, we had another DTD. Well, in HTML5, it is now built into the standard, so it is now just simply a matter of specifying doc type HTML. By doing this, all we have to do is state that it is an HTML document, and we leave it up to the browser to understand what the elements are that are in it. Some things that have changed are mostly terms but we use the term deprecated and obsolete. Now deprecated means that this particular element that I'm going to use should not be used anymore. It is no longer officially in the standard and some browsers may or may not actually support it. And what would happen is if I made a website that a, an element became deprecated, then what would happen is if somebody's browser decided that they didn't want to support that anymore, the old browsers could I'm sorry, the newer browsers could do away with the older tags, which means my website was broken. In HTML5, what they have done is they've changed the wording to obsolete, which effectively means the same thing, but to me as a developer, it makes a change. The change is, is if I make a website and I use a tag that becomes obsolete, the new browsers are supposed to continue to support those features. Now, if I use an element that is obsolete, I should stop using it. I should go back and I should change my website. I should fix it. But in reality, once you make a site and you provide it to a customer and it's out there in the internet, chances are you forget about it. They never think about it because they don't know about things being deprecated versus obsolete. So we need to just simply put them out there, use whatever's current at the time. But with HTML5, we don't have to worry about the website breaking a couple of versions of the browser down the road. In HTML4 and XHTML, any error handling was up to the developer, which meant if I created a web page that something could have caused an error in a browser, I had to, I had to figure out some way to handle that. Well, what they've done now is in HTML5, the error handling is actually part of the browser, I'm sorry, part of the standard, so the browser knows how to handle it. What this does for me is it makes it where I only have to test my website in a couple of different browsers. I don't have to go back and test 50 different web browsers to see if my website works correctly. I know that if I make my website HTML5 compliant, it will work the same in any HTML5 compliant web browser, and I don't have to go back and test in all those different ones. So the nice thing is, is HTML5 handles the errors for me, and I no longer have to do my extensive testing. HTML5 allows for what is called loose syntax. You'll notice through the other lessons that I've done, the things like image tags, which are not container elements. Those are what are called void elements. And in the void elements, we had to include the forward slash at the end. That's actually not in the standard for HTML5. HTML5 will allow it to be self-closing with or without the forward slash at the end. It also uses loose syntax, which means that if I put in my uh, paragraph tag as a capital P, it will allow that. And it ignores casing of all of these. So if I do EM for an emphasis for this paragraph word, 
and I close it as a capital EM, it'll ignore that. It's fine. And then I have a forward slash lowercase p, which is closing this capital P over here. In older versions of HTML, this could easily throw an error. Um, so what happens is HTML5 will ignore it and just assume that it's the same thing as this one where everything is lowercase. However, it is best practice to uh, write your entire page. All the tags should be lowercase. All the attributes should be lowercase. And the reason that we're doing that is for consistency. We've also experienced shortened tags. Now in the meta tag, we specified our character set. Um, our character set is UTF-8. Well, in prior versions, we actually had to specify its HTTP uh, equivalent. We had to specify its content and then specify this long string state that it is text and it's UTF-8. In the new version, we just simply say meta care set equals and then UTF-8. Same thing with scripts. If I want to include a JavaScript, uh, all I have to do now is instead of stating that its type is JavaScript, it will automatically assume it so I can shorten it to this. And the same thing with embedding CSS. Uh, if I want to link to an external CSS style sheet, I no longer have to state that it is text forward slash CSS. I can leave it as just simply a, re a relation to style sheet, href is this. But if I go back and I include the older version, older browsers will understand it too. HTML5 will ignore it if this is in here, but the older browsers can also understand it. Okay, self-closing tags. We talked about those just a minute ago. Those are what are called void elements. Those are things like my image tag, the thing where I had to include the forward slash at the end, our line breaks where I included forward slashes at the end. Officially, in HTML5, we, we don't need to use those. All right, so what, where did they come from? Well, they came from the XHTML standard. The XHTML standard required self-closing tags to end with a forward slash. Why do I still use it? I use it for compatibility. And what I mean by that is if I'm using a browser that is strictly HTML5 compliant, I don't need them. But if somebody is using an older browser that does not fully understand HTML5, it will read my website in whatever manner it believes that it should, and it will try to pull it in as XHTML or HTML4, and then it may look for those forward slashes. So for compatibility, I'm going to use the forward slashes. However, after several iterations of browsers, hopefully that requirement will go away and I can just simply use it without the forward slash. However, there's one thing that you need to be aware of. If I make an HTML document and I try to access that document from another web page that does use XHTML, or if I'm trying to use my HTML document in an XML document, then I need to use whatever the restrictions are of that particular language. So once again, if it's XHTML, I need the forward slash. If it's XML, I need the forward slash. So I need to pay attention to what is my website going to be used for, and I may still have the requirement of doing the forward slash. All right, formatting attributes. Many of the formatting attributes, such as font, center, strike, underline, and so forth, are obsolete. Now remember, obsolete means they'll still work, but they shouldn't be used. Officially, a lot of this stuff has been deprecated in the older HTML and XHTML standards, so we really shouldn't be using the font tag and the center tag and BG color and st stuff like that. We should be using CSS instead. CSS gives us much more compatibility. It is more consistent. It's actually a little bit easier to use but we have to actually specify it. One of the other things that is gone is frames and frame sets. And what the frames are is you used to have where I could specify that the left side of my browser was one complete HTML document and the right side was a separate HTML document. And then what I could do is I could provide links over here that would make the right side change. Well, the idea is, is that hasn't been used since the late 90s, so why not get rid of it? So those are now obsolete. Now remember, Obsolete means that they can still work, the browser will still support it, but we shouldn't use it. The A tag, these are our anchors. One of the things that's different is in the older versions of HTML, an A tag was an inline element, which meant that I could only use my A tag around an image or a little bit of text or things that were side by side like that. 
In HTML5, the A tag can be a wrapper. It can be a container element. I can take my A tag, provide a link, and then put elements inside of it. So I can have an H2 for contact us, send an email message to us, and now this entire thing will be our anchor. That'll be our link. However, the catch is, is that you cannot put one A tag inside of another A tag. So in this, in this code here in the middle, I can only have one A tag on the outside. I cannot have another one in the middle. JavaScript. When, when we play with JavaScript, we have to specify how JavaScript is going to interface with things like uh, server-side scripting, if I have a database or anything like that that I want to try to get data out of, if there's an XML document. We can do that with JavaScript, but what we had to do is we had to tell the browser how to handle that type of information. We want to know how JavaScript is actually going to work. The problem was in the older uh, HTML standards, there was no specification for how the JavaScript API worked, which meant that we left it up to each individual browser to develop their own means of implementing JavaScript. All right, that's fine. So what happened was Microsoft provided one for Internet Explorer and then made it available to the other, uh, the other web browsers so that they can use it. So what's happening is all of the browsers were using officially the same JavaScript API, but everybody modified it a little bit to make it work with their browser. Now in HTML5, this API is now documented in the standard. It will provide better compatibility. HTML semantic elements. I've already used a couple of these. All right, so what we were using is we used the header, we used the nav, and then we used the footer. This middle section here is a little bit different. Now, in the lessons that I have created already, we were using the div e um, id equals content. And what I did was I put everything in the middle, in the actual body, the stuff that should show up on the page, in that div id equals content. And that's fine, it'll work. But the problem is um, that if I want my website to be indexed, Google, Yahoo, all of them, they don't know what that information represents. So what they have done is they provided us with new semantic elements to provide a means for browsers and for search engines to understand the different elements that are on our page. Okay, so I have article, I have section, I have aside. Okay, now the aside, this would be things like if I want to put uh, news tickers, advertisements, if I want to put uh, stock, um, things like that, I can have that over there on the side. And what happens is the, I'm sorry, the search engines will ignore this information because they know that that's not necessarily part of the content of the page. But what they will look at is this over here where it says section and article. And what I can have is I can have this thing called section, which is something that would include articles. And so I may have a section that has to do with sports and a section that has to do with uh, world news. And then within those sections, then I can have different articles. And the way that it works is each article is a container tag. Therefore, uh, the search engines will know, okay, from, from here down to the closing article tag is all one article and it will treat it as one piece of information. What that means for me is let's say I have a website where I, I include things like puppies and I, I have a section that has to do with getting a new Dalmatian dog and then I have another section of the page that has to do with me going on vacation. Those are two separate articles. In the old version, if I just put everything under the div ID equals content, then what happens is that the search engines don't necessarily realize that the dog and the vacation have nothing in common. So what happens is they will index the page as if things from my vacation section are pertaining to things that are in the dog section. So what happens is I could mention something about a, um, a Dalmatian dog and the Dalmatian dog could be listed at the top and then 10 paragraphs down I could mention uh, let's say I went to Paris. So if somebody goes online and they're looking for a Dalmatian dog in Paris they may find my web page because my page mentions Dalmatian and Paris in the same document, but they're not in the same area. 
However, if I put those as two separate articles, then what will happen is uh, the search engine will realize that the Dalmatian has nothing to do with the, um, the Paris article. And therefore, if somebody searches for Dalmatian in Paris, they won't see my document. In this lesson, you learned about the current status of HTML5, the key differences between HTML4, XHTML, and HTML5, the key principles of HTML5, and an introduction to the HTML5 element. Of the